Why, hello everyone! I am your lovely host, Innocent, and welcome back to Innocent's Voice Acting Advice. Or, as I like to call it, Eva. Today's topic is how to warm up your voice. In this video, I'll be telling you ways to warm up your voice with examples and explaining why it's best that you do warm up your voice. Now, these warm ups are good for anyone who uses their voice for a living, be it voice acting, singing, broadcasting, or what have you. Trying some of these out before you get to work might just help you out in the long run. I'll start off by explaining as to why warming up your voice is a good idea and why you should probably do it. When you produce sound with your voice, you're using muscles that are found in your throat and near your lungs. Uh, bringing harm to those muscles could be detrimental. At best, it might limit how you speak. At worst, it could stop you from breathing. Some of these effects might be temporary, while others could be lifelong problems that you just kind of have to deal with and they may or may not be able to be fixed via therapy. <laughs> Using your voice for long periods of time or straining it in unnatural ways sometimes are a must to get a certain sound that a director or whoever really wants, but if anything begins to hurt, stop. Stop speaking, stop singing, stop yelling, just, just stop. Take a break, drink some water, hot tea, honey, and if the pain doesn't go away, contact a medical professional. Just don't be reckless with your voice. You only got one of these things. Harming the muscles that you use to speak isn't nice. So warming up those muscles is a must. I would recommend taking 10 to 30 minutes out of your schedule to warm up your vocal cords. Also, since it's good to know, after waking up from sleeping for any extended period of time, it takes your muscles about 15 minutes to fully wake up with you. So just keep that in mind. Let's start with the easier vocal warm-ups, tongue twisters. Tongue twisters are great at getting your tongue and lips into action. If you're notorious for stumbling over your words, like me, tongue twisters are sure to help. Here are a few examples, as well as me making a fool out of myself. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Did Peter Piper pick a peck of pickled peppers? If Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers, where's the peck of pickled peppers Peter Piper picked? How much wood could a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? Fuzzy Wuzzy was a bear. Fuzzy Wuzzy had no hair. Fuzzy Wuzzy wasn't very Fuzzy Wuzzy. When a doctor doctors a doctor, does the doctor doing the doctoring doctor as the doctor being doctored wants to be doctored? Or does the doctor doing the doctoring doctor as he wants to doctor? So, this is the sushi sushi. 33,000 people think that Thursday is their 13th birthday. How many cans can a cannibal nibble? If a cannibal can nibble cans. <laughs> Next up, Arthur T. Audio on Twitter said that he does exaggerated narration. I would bunch this in to doing monologues. Doing a short, not very taxing performance will not only help you warm up, but if you're warming up for acting, this can help you get into the right mindset. Here's an example of something of that caliber. <sighs> Spell death for me so I can stare at it, examine it, and try to get around it. I won't let it block my view to what's on the other side. I know what's on the other side. Something beyond words. Something beyond feelings. Something more important, something more understood. I see it. I know it. I... I sense it. That was Spell Death For Me by Joseph Aronin. Yeah, that's how you say that name, sure. <laughs> Anne Angel of Sin on Twitter also shared her warm-up with me, which is covering songs. I actually do this one quite a bit. But I wouldn't recommend using this as your only type of warm-up, as even singing does require warming up for. But if it's a simple song with nothing too advanced in it, it should be fine for a warm-up, in theory. Use this warm-up at your own digression. After all, you know you the best. Finally, we have the most common type of vocal warm-ups. The one used by singers. <laughs> Now, you don't have to be a singer to use these to your advantage. You don't even have to be good at singing. These just help you loosen up your vocal cords and aren't harmful. Here are some examples of different types of singing warm-ups. If you want to use this as a guide, go ahead. If not, um, I don't know exactly what they're called. 
because I'm bad at English, and these aren't even English. <laughs> la 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 me 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 Pizza, 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 pizza. Ah, the things I do for the internet. <laughs> anyway, these are some of the most popular ways to warm up your voice. Many professionals do these things every single day to keep their voices in tip-top shape. Remember, if you're voicing something or singing and it begins to hurt, stop. Even when you're screaming into your mic, it's not supposed to hurt. If it does hurt, you're using improper techniques and doing something wrong. Please, stay safe and stay hydrated. Your voice is your tool. You don't want to break your tool. Now do you? Anyway, break a leg out there and keep on voice acting. <clears throat> we never speak of that. Anyway, if you liked what you just watched, feel free to click or tap here and it will take you to the latest video on my channel. Or you can let the YouTube algorithms choose a video it thinks you'll like. Magic! And of course, you can click or tap over here to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Come join the cult! We're always open to new members. <laughs> Anywho, I hope to see you all soon. Peace out. Bye-bye!